Welcome to another episode of Glimpses of a Glorious Past, an informal history of the Lawrence School Lovedale. In the last episode, as part of the Stalwarts of Lovedale series, we spoke about Pandey Jitendra Pratap, who will be remembered for as long as our school song "Sabse Sundar" is sung. Today, we begin a new series called the Landmarks of Lovedale. This will feature landmarks that were an integral part of our school days, which we remember till this day. We start this series with the iconic clock tower. Here's a question which may seem pretty easy to answer for many of you. How did kids in Lovedale keep track of the time all the way from 1871 to 1927 that is over 50 years your options are a by seeing the clock on the clock tower b by hearing the chimes of the church bells and c by tracking the sun if your answer was a by seeing the clock on the clock tower i'm afraid that's the wrong answer The right answer is probably a mix of B and C. Going back in time, the clock tower was built in 1869 as part of the school chapel. It would be more accurately described as being a church tower. A report from those days elaborates on the architecture, and here I quote: "The chapel's boy side is designed in the Italian Gothic style." and is a two-story construction forming three sides of a quadrangle a feature of which is the campanile 130 feet high the campanile is what an italian bell tower was called we assume of course that from time to time the church bells would peal for services throughout the day this picture of the clock tower taken around 1908 clearly indicates that the clock tower did not have a clock at that time as we have seen in previous episodes of glimpses of a glorious past the reverend patfield brought about many significant improvements to the school during his tenure as principal his crowning glory came in 1925 when the school was accorded the title of being a royal military school it is to the same Reverend Patfield that credit goes for putting a clock on that tower in 1928 this was towards the end of his stint in lovedale closer to our times successive generations of the residents have had their daily lives virtually regimented by the chimes of the clock tower. Kevin Phillips, Aravalli 1956, a wise head boy and a major contributor to the Glimpses project, in recalling his early days in Lovedale says, "I was at one time a duty bugler. I had to get the school awake with reveille. As the duty bugler, I would fully dressed sound reveille." to the tune of Charlie Charlie get out of bed standing on the school banks at the top of the 67 steps at 6 a.m. sharp this was not withstanding the cold the rain or anything else there were also calls in to fall into parade fire alarm call and change class calls the kitchen call at meal times was come to the kitchen door boys come to the kitchen door finally at night the duty bugler would come and sound the last post at 8:45 pm and finally lights out at 9 pm most of us did not have a watch in those times all this was done relying solely on the good old clock tower some 40 years later in 1994 gayatri v nai wrote in the lorenzo about the clock tower being the trademark of our school Clock tower stands like an immense structure of stone and brick, cemented together many years ago. Science may term it to be non-living due to its inability to show off living features, 
but within those four stone walls there lies an area of accumulated emotions that have filled the town and keeps filling the town with definite signs of life this tower makes us aware not only about time but also binds us old and new as the rensians proud of our heritage and our school not all of us have been fortunate enough to capture the breathtaking views of our school from the top of the structure but the mere thought of seeing miles and miles of the school campus stretching beneath and beyond it assigns a new meaning to the word beauty the clock tower continues to fascinate generations of laurentians 20 years later in 2005 ashita alexander wrote in the laurentian it's almost not possible to come to love tale and not fall in love with our clock tower many assume it was always there never once wondering how it got there in september 1920 the correspondence between our school and buttons and sons co dwellers began after a lot of letters telegrams and phone calls A clock was finalized in July 1928 and the makers were JB Joyce and Co. The best clock makers during that time for over 2 centuries and the price of the final clock a little over 5000 rupees. The best quality English made turret clock, wood rod pendulum, steel lantern pinions, hammer pulley cords and gunmetal wheels and bushes still work 76 years later. This is how our clock tower came to be. And I must say it is the most elegant building not just in Nilgiris but probably the entire country. Our clock tower has gone through her fair share of repairs and has even lost her chime for a long period of time but never once lost her charm. Thanks to the OL badge of 1975 she is now restored to her full glory. Who would think that our clock tower is the reason many even consider joining Lawrence? Not only that, our clock tower provides an inspiration to the many minds at Lawrence, and is the main association that most old Lawrenceans have with their home away from home. Lawrenceans' pride, student punctuality, and a chime that rings out, never give in. The school is 164 years old and the clock in the tower still works. Any wonders why? How come? Something that many of you probably don't know. At our 25th reunion in 2000, we found that the clock in the tower did not chime and discovered it had been in disrepair for several years before that. The batch wondered and decided to initiate project CTP 2000 or the clock tower project we met harsh wall then headmaster at an ol meet in chennai the same year and offered to restore it with an idea that we would embed a plaque in the wall outside his office acknowledging the contribution of the class of 75 we were certain that seeing the plaque other batches would be motivated and inspired to do more and better he agreed the rest is history Once the plan was agreed upon we set upon to work to find someone to take on this fairly extensive works as we were find out subsequently after a few contractors were contacted we decided to award the job to P or and sons of chennai and discovered that the damage had indeed been extensive to poor maintenance several gear wheels had to be newly cast in embato as they had fractures and while the gong sound the mallet was fabricated and muffled to limit limit its resonance volunteers from the batch namely anand manohar aka loki and raguraman t also known as ragu visited the school periodically to monitor and supervise the work help and assistance from the senior boys in school to bring down the heavy parts using pulleys and scaffolding the volunteers also visited the casting unit in coimbatore to check on quality and progress while the class volunteers committed to a project of giving back to school felt responsible and accountable by their personal involvement 
It must be mentioned that P. Orr and Sons did an excellent job of precision matching and calibrating new gears on an old chassis. And while it may have been possible to have mounted an electric powered analog clock keeping the externals intact, the vintage value would have been lost. Mr. Raghavan at that time was the acting headmaster and extended full cooperation to the batch. The batch of 1975 restored the chime of time in Lovedale. And 22, layers, 22 years later, the clock continues resonating in the hills. Have any of you OLs been up to Clock Tower recently? M. M. Devaya of Batch 1986 was up there a couple of months ago and sent in these beautiful pictures. The Irish novelist John Banville famously wrote, The past beats inside me like a second heart. Being around since 1869, if our clock tower could speak, it would probably say the same. With this, we come to the end of another episode of Glimpses of a Glorious Past, an informal history of the Lord of School Lovedale. Thank you for joining in. If you would like to contribute to Glimpses in any way, please send us an email to olalovedale at gmail.com with the subject line for Team Glimpses.